Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about the benefits of training with a low heart rate. Specifically, if you want to get better at running for a 5K or a half marathon or an event like that. A lot of this comes from my own experience training. I used to run three to five miles a day as hard as I could four, five, six times a week. And eventually I kind of got burnt out doing this and I didn't even realize that this really wasn't optimal for my performance. I found out this training strategy of just running a few miles kind of hard very frequently ended up leaving me feeling tired, not enjoying training, and it really limited the number of miles that I could really run per week. Over time though, I learned a lot about running from other running coaches, from physical therapy school, and from working with a lot of runners. This led me to take a drastically different training approach to my recent half marathons, half Ironman events, and other running events that led to PRs with less effort in training. I was surprised at just how effective it can be to run with a low heart rate. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that, what heart rate to look for on your watch when you're running, as well as the five main benefits of training with a low heart rate. So if you're looking to improve your running performance, feel healthier for your races, and hit PRs more consistently through low heart rate training, then this is the video for you. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to start off, let's talk about what actually is a low heart rate. Because is a low heart rate 120 beats a minute, 140 beats a minute, 160 beats per minute? What actually makes the heart rate low? Well, this is different for everyone, but I'll tell you exactly how to calculate your low heart rate for training the same way that I do. So what I would do is do a max heart rate test. This is a test where you go on the treadmill and you get faster and faster with this protocol. You just go until you can't go any longer and you measure your heart rate throughout the test. Wherever your heart rate gets to, whenever you can't go any longer, that's your max heart rate. For me, that works out to around 191 beats per minute. That's the heart rate that I'm at for the last 20 or 30 seconds or so of this staged exercise protocol. If you don't wanna do a test, you can get an estimate of that by doing 220 minus your age. For me, I'm 28, so if I did 220 minus my age, I would get 192, which turns out to be a pretty good estimate for me, though there is a lot of individual variability. I've seen some people go far above or far below their estimate. So it's up to you, but you need to find out what your maximum heart rate is. Okay, so now let's assume you have that maximum heart rate. Maybe you're like me and yours is also 191 beats per minute, but maybe it's 180, maybe it's 195, whatever it is, you're gonna use that heart rate and multiply by 0.7. For me, that works out to about 134 beats per minute. This is my low heart rate training. I tend to stay below 70% of my maximum heart rate for my low heart rate training. That means running around 125 to 135 beats per minute. This isn't very fast. In fact, I had to train for months doing walk runs, walk runs, to even be able to consistently run and not get my heart rate above 135 beats per minute. It feels almost like it's too slow to possibly be effective, but that's the point of low heart rate training. It should feel really easy. If you're not used to this style of training, you're probably gonna start with your run walks or your very light jogs, and they're gonna feel like a shuffle. Know that even the professionals, the very best runners in the world, train like this. Iliad Kipchoge, the marathon world record holder, trains very slowly with a shuffle run also. There's a lot of benefits to it, which is what we're gonna get into now. Benefit number one is that there's a very low amount of fatigue associated with this low intensity training. It's really when you get into that kind of hard training that you start to feel the fatigue from training. If you go run a 5K as hard as you can, you're gonna feel pretty tired from that. But if you just go jog a 5K at a very slow pace, keeping your heart rate around that 70% of maximum target, then you're probably not gonna get that tired from that effort. This is really one of the secrets of low heart rate training is that it's not that tiring, so you can actually do a lot of it and not feel burnt out. This is what leads us into point number two, which is that low heart rate training allows you to run more miles per week. Race performance, especially in something like a half marathon, a half Ironman, or even a 5K, is very well correlated with the number of miles you can run per week. The main difference between recreational runners and runners who are able to qualify for the Boston Marathon 
is the number of miles they're putting in consistently week to week over a long period of time. It's not the intensity of each individual run. Trying to do very heroic efforts and get a good workout a few times here and there is a really poor training strategy when it comes to training for an endurance event. It's all about consistency and consistently running with a low heart rate allows you to train more so we can accumulate more mileage and therefore be more prepared to run a race. Benefit number three of training with a low heart rate is that it pairs well with strength training. I typically recommend that runners strength train two to three times a week. About half of your exercises can be single leg, like single leg deadlifts, single leg step downs, marches, lunges, and other exercises that require you to be balanced and dynamically stable on one leg. That has a really good carryover to running performance, but it's also important to get strong at exercises like back squats and deadlifts and other exercises that put load through your spine. This builds bone mineral density and coordination and does help with running performance as well. I find it to be really effective to combine that low heart rate aerobic training with a lot of volume of it with strength training that's lower repetition generally around sets of five, sets of six, sets of eight with really heavy loads. That pairs really well together and tends to produce really good results for runners. If you're going to Orange Theory and you're pushing your runs really hard and you're doing high rep strength training, I tend to see that that pair isn't quite as effective, especially for our more competitive runners. I am curious though, what do you do for strength training? Let us know in the comments below and share any tips that you have. Benefit number four of doing low heart rate training is that it allows you to make your truly hard efforts hard. If you're always training kinda in the middle, kinda hard, kinda easy, you never really get the true aerobic benefits of the low intensity training and you never get the benefits of the truly high intensity work. By doing this more polarized approach, where 80 or 90% of your volume is low heart rate training, that allows that 10% or that one or two sessions per week where you're layering in hard efforts to truly be hard efforts, where your heart rate is really getting up and you're really putting in quality strides. I would much rather see the runners that I coach have five sets of 15 seconds of truly good hard strides layered into a workout than to do 30 or 40 minutes of running kinda hard. There's just more of that true aerobic benefit to having those shorter, truly high intensity efforts than to doing a bunch of kind of hard runs. If you haven't tried training this way, consider working with that low intensity pace and then layering in just a few really hard, high quality efforts per week. And that leads us into benefit number five of low heart rate training. And it's just that you're more likely to hit a PR. If you don't believe me, you can look into the research yourself on a polarized approach versus a threshold approach. Let's give you an example of exactly what a training week could look like for you if you're going to adopt this more low heart rate approach to training. Maybe previously your training looked a little bit like this, a bunch of yellow efforts. Yellow efforts would be that kind of hard zone somewhere in the middle. If you're used to only doing those moderate intensity workouts, what you could do is adopt a training program instead that looks a little bit like this. Green efforts would be that low heart rate training. Red efforts would be truly hard intervals where we're doing those 15 or 30 second hard efforts. Most of our workouts throughout the week are gonna be those green low intensity efforts. Those are gonna be very recoverable and enjoyable and they should feel pretty easy. Just a little bit of your weekly volume could be dedicated towards that moderate zone or that high intensity zone. By shifting from a more moderate intensity approach to a more polarized approach where we're doing some easy, some hard, we can see a lot of benefits in training. You'll feel better, you won't be as burnt out, and chances are you're gonna hit a PR. I hope you guys learned something that's gonna benefit your training. If you don't have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below, or just go ahead in the comments below and let me know what you're training for. I'll put a link in the description below to all the running products and the training programs and things like that that I recommend if you're interested in checking those out. Also, if you wanna learn more, you can check out the Movement System on Instagram as well as the Movement System Podcast. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.